Yes, it's true. There's a study that shows that plastic has found its way from our environment, including what we consume, into our arteries. Obviously, unless you're the Michelin man, you have no intention of turning into plastic. So that news is likely pretty discomforting, and I don't blame you. I feel the same way. That said, there is some additional worrying news related to this shocking study. But in the end, I have some positive news to outline for you. So grab a drink, preferably not in a plastic container, and let's zoom into your artery. In brief, the researchers quantified the amount of micro and nanoplastics, abbreviated MNPs, found in the plaque of our arteries. To be frank with you, there is no way that I would agree to this surgery. And if you do, you're braver than I. The researchers performed a carotid endarterectomy, which means that they cut open the participant's carotid artery. You are seeing why I'd give this a big hell no, <laughs> and rerouted their blood supply through tubes as they pulled the plaque out that has built up in the carotid artery. It looks like this. You know, no big deal. Just going to cut up a massive artery, clamp it, reroute your blood supply, and casually pull this thing out of your neck. And then, good as new, run along now. Hell no! <laughs> Not for me. Although, I will say, medical technology and surgery has progressed so much, it's truly awe-inspiring. Anyway, that's what they did. And then they not only quantified the amount of microplastics found in the plaque taken from the artery, but they then tracked these people's outcomes over the next three years. As in, they tracked if they had any cardiovascular events like heart attacks or stroke and plotted that based on if they had plastics in their body or not to determine if the presence of plastics was linked to additional cardiovascular risk. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you the data in a bit. But let's look at uh, this data first. We're looking at the two main plastics identified in the plaque. The vertical axis is the amount of micrograms of plastic per milligram of plaque. So anything above zero is the presence of plastic and the horizontal axis is the two microplastics. The individual dots are the individual results from each participant. Obviously, while they had more of one than the other, both were present. You can see that some people had a tremendous amount, upwards of 100 plus micrograms. Since the title of this video is what it is, I think this is probably pretty expected. Otherwise, this whole video is a wild goose chase. Yep, physionic community. That's another expression that I don't actually understand, but I'll refrain. Additionally, the researchers used a powerful microscope technique called electron microscopy to identify actual plastic pieces found in and around the cells of our body. So here, we're looking at the inside of a macrophage, that's an immune cell, and the outside of the cell. The researchers have identified some non-organic irregular shapes in both, identified with black arrows. Those are microplastics. Okay, a few lines of evidence that we haven't uh, been on a wild goose chasing, a uh, fruitless endeavor, so I've been led to believe. Now, how does this actually affect our cardiovascular health? Well, I'd love to tell you that the plastic is actually reinforcing our arteries and we're protected from disease. But I don't, I don't think anyone would believe me, and I'd likely get accused of being bought off by big water bottle. And anyway, the data indicates otherwise. Cracking open that long-term data, we see primary endpoints on the vertical axis. That is a generalized term for the number of heart attacks, strokes, and deaths of any cause. So naturally, if the line goes up, that means that there's more risk of these events occurring. The horizontal axis is the amount of time that's elapsed. The orange line represents the people with microplastics, and the blue line represents the people without microplastics. Therein lies a clue on something of great importance that I'll discuss in a while. For now, let's stick to the interpreting this data. Clearly, the difference between the lines is noticeable, indicating increased risk associated with people that have these plastics in their body. Okay, now we see this worrying relationship, and here is where I might seem like I'm going off the deep end, because I'm about to make an argument against plastics being the cause here, but bear with me. I promise I haven't lost my mind. 
In addition to these plastics, the researchers also measured the amounts of inflammatory markers, which are secreted by cells and change the cells to be more pro-inflammatory and damaging, which really woefully undersells the effect that these cytokines, the pro-inflammatory markers that we're discussing, have on the body. But I digress. If we look at their levels, we see that they are all higher in people who have at least one version of these plastics in their body. The blue and green conditions are the people with these plastics in their system. So now, is it the plastics that are directly causing the cardiovascular disease or is it the inflammation? Now you may be thinking, who cares? Well, I care because this study provides no evidence that plastics create inflammation directly. And we know that heightened inflammation is an agent in plaque buildup in our arteries. So it is technically possible that the plastics are not the cause and inflammation or even something else that co-correlates with the presence of plastics is the real culprit or even a majority culprit while plastics are a minority. Do I believe that argument? No, I don't. However, it's important to point out that this study has limitations and I feel those are not being discussed appropriately in other content that I've seen on this topic. People are immediately creating this causative link between plastics and heart disease and for understandable reason when the study is highly unlikely to create a conclusion because it is an associative study. I'm just putting this out there because we need more data to be sure of the exact effect. And we always need to take the data as it is without over extrapolating. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox because I have some counter arguments to my own point. For example, the researchers point out that other studies have indicated micro and nanoplastic causes endothelial dysfunction. Those are the cells that line your blood vessels and can even cause inflammation and oxidative stress. So there is some mechanistic data to corroborate the results of this study. It's just that we shouldn't overinterpret these results. Additionally, remember this data? This was statistically adjusted for some major covariates, potential confounding variables, like body weight, diabetes, LDL, HDL, high blood pressure, and a few others, which increases the certainty of the results being centered around plastics, although not totally. Finally, and likely most damning, the baseline characteristics of the participants shown here, I hope you don't mind if I don't walk you through all this info, uh, the bottom line is there were no major obvious differences between the people who had plastics in their arteries and those that didn't. So while that doesn't address the inflammation aspect, it does address many other things. Okay, so where is the good news in all this? I did promise some and goose chasing isn't my style. So what's the rub? <laughs> Which if you've been watching Physionic for some time, I didn't know what that expression was either until someone informed me that it came from Shakespeare apparently and may have even originated before then. See, while I don't understand most expressions, I learn along the way thanks to you. So what's the rub? Clearly, even in this associative study, we know that the plastics can accumulate in our plaque and that's pretty scary unless again, you're the Michelin man. However, I'll have you note that we had multiple comparisons of people with microplastics in their body against people who didn't. So that means some people don't have microplastics in their body. And the number isn't small either, around 40% according to this study. Now, of course, you could look at the opposite and say, well, 60% did, and that's one way to look at it. But remember, the researchers specifically selected people with significant plaque in their arteries. So there may have been some selection bias going on here. In the end, we know that not everyone has these plastics. And considering plastics can be absorbed through our consumption, our skin, by inhalation, the routes of entry are ubiquitous. So what makes these people special? Well, these people have simply starved themselves, never worn anything, and stopped breathing, which has then eliminated their plastic accumulation. Of course, I'm kidding. 
We don't know why these people seem unaffected, at least in this metric. But with future research, we may be able to pinpoint what they are doing or some inherent protection that they have that may create this benefit. It is entirely possible that you watching this now may be unaffected but we don't know yet. With those comforting words, if you're interested in improving your heart health, I'd really recommend this linked video. Until then, bye.